Hey what's up guys, I'm John Nguyen here, and this is the 8 inch Android head unit doubled in by Join with support of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This is the automotive head unit you probably never heard of or heard all about if you're subscribed to my channel. Now you're probably wondering, is it any good? Now this Android head unit I've been using for weeks now, about 3 weeks, and I really put it through its paces, figuring out what it's all about. Now what it does have is, is an Intel octa-core processor, so this is one of the newest ones for the 2019 release. It has SPDIF, giving it incredible audio capability, designed for those audiophiles who want the best sound with the external amps and all that stuff. It's nice to have these options. But because it's not a big brand like Pioneer, Kenwood, it's going to hurt its popularity because it's just not well known. Now for a unit that has SPDIFs, it's going to be the Sony and the price is around 2000 versus this one which is in the under 500 range. So it's great value. Now this is one of the standout features but for those who don't want to go external amps, exclusive like extensive speaker overhaul, the internal amplifier that's what I've been using for the most part have been, has been really good. Now let's talk about appearance and design. The easiest way to think of this head unit is an iPad tablet stuck onto your dash. That's what it essentially is. Join has definitely stuck gold with this modern design element you find on most Teslas, Mercedes, and other floating tablet designs in general 2018-2019. Now the main drawback I see with this design is, um, well it doesn't look too much in terms of flushness and the huge joying branding right in front. Now that is a pretty big drawback and pretty big font, but using it day to day it doesn't bother me and it's not as bothersome like a notch on a phone. So it's not really, it's there but you get used to it. Now straight out of the box it does come with this 3D background you find on Android tablets too, showing the graphical power that this unit has. Now, to be honest, it is a bit cheesy, but with the bokeh effects, the sh uh, shallow depth of field blur, it's interesting. Now, the icons are vibrant, large, and easy to read on this display. The flexibility on the Android head unit allows you to change the user interface too. Changing the launcher allows you to tailor your look, your experience, and what best suits you, which is nice because every car has a different look and feel, so you definitely want to basically you know focus on what your car is supposed to look so it doesn't clash with the design now I'm going to be showing you this car launcher for example it has a more slicker UI it's more automotive base and I really like the feel and it has a bunch of themes with it where this other launcher that you can also download it looks more like a traditional setup of a, you know an iPad tablet has icons and you know it just really depends on what the user wants options are great here. Now the display itself, I would call a high resolution display. It's much better than the 800 by 600 pixels found in other aftermarket displays coming from bigger companies. Uh, this is a 20, 1024 by 600 at 8 inches and it looks fine. Um, if it was 1280 by 720p that would be a really nice addition because you know, just that's just a really nice, that's HD. But again, high resolution still looks very good. And I'm sitting really far back because, I mean, it's a car. So you're not going to be up close to it like a smartphone. I'm going to say it's going to be fine. It's actually better than most and leading in, in this class. Now, the physical display itself has this pleasant but subtle metal polish trim that runs across the display, giving a touch of class. Join again did a really good job because this isn't paint or a faux design, it's actually metal. The whole display apparatus feels very dense and it has a good weight to it uh, because it's made with a metal chassis on top of that. Now the whole button situation is very interesting. The buttons are touch based and they are programmable which is a nice feature. You can set it to open Android Auto, Google Maps, YouTube, it's a shortcut button so whatever you want to open. You just tap the icon and then boom. Now physical buttons would have been nice right here so you can get that extra tactile feedback but aesthetically this looks a lot more pleasing and more flat design um, no buttons nothing 
it, it just looks a lot better so this probably would have been the better choice and the choice that I would prefer to now it does come support for steering wheel controls so you don't lose it steering wheel supports come straight out of the box you don't have to buy any additional uh, adapters or whatever similar to um, I remember I had a pioneer and I had to buy this ad additional $80 adapter you don't have to for this unit which is again a plus and the steering wheel controls can be also programmable to however you like it too. Volume up, down, next, previous, and play and pause are essential. So keep that for sure. But what is nice is you can have a whole list of other features on top of that. These hotkeys can act as single clicks, double clicks, giving an additional layer of, you know, macroing. So this unit has a built quality that's very premium and it's been very durable for these last three weeks I had it no scratches the screen no problem so let's talk about the specs Joying's car stereo has an Intel 8 core processor called the SC9853i it has 4 gigs of RAM 32 gigabytes internal storage with expandable storage through a micro SD or USB storage so you know flash drives external hard drives the display is an 8 inch IPS panel touchscreen display with 1024 by 600 resolution. Now, though this is a kind of tablet in front of your car, it still has car like features like the radio, and it's using the NXP TF6686 radio. That's the chip it's using. And the audio side, it has a TDA7851 amplifier. 4G LTE SIM card support so you can take internet access on the road. It has built in DSP, 16 band EQ with independent front and rear settings, subwoofer output levels, low pass frequencies adjustments, and more. And which a lot of people like is the Android Auto and Apple Car su Play support. So, you know, every both camps are accommodated. And of course, you also have Bluetooth for audio and hands-free calling. Some other features I like to skim through is there's a there's two USBs for charging or storage. There's GPS-based navigation, split screen, multitasking, fast boot, again, the digital SPDIF audio output, RGB lighting. So all your high-end specs are here. It also has a really neat feature where you can detach the screen for security purposes. It's simple to remove and it's just held by clips. So removing is a cinch if you want to, you know, you're in a shady neighborhood and you don't want to have this big old tablet hanging out. Another feature that's kind of cool is um, it's using an IDE cable and that's kind of interesting from a PC perspective because you usually see that for um, basically CD drives and old hard drives. but it using it as for the, the, the display interface that's kind of cool and um, what's also really cool about this is you can basically hot swap if you get a 10 inch uh, display you can kind of swap the, these screens around because it has a, uh, a, a port like this and again the display is a good one and it's very bright and the high resolution it looks great for videos and games um, when you're driving, the sun does get bright and it does leak into your interior. But I have definitely haven't had any issues when I'm viewing outdoors or driving. So that's really good. However, the screen isn't tiltable because it's held by this pinch style clip layout. Now for performance, it's all around excellent and for the Intel processor, I haven't noticed any slowdowns or weird delays, any bad anomalies. For day-to-day -day use, you're going to be perfectly fine. I use it for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And again, no stutters. It's, that stuff it usually just has to do with your phone. The only gripe is the Z-Link app right here. It's kind of laggy, kind of slow to boot. And when you plug in your phone, it takes a, it takes a while to boot and that's like this gets kind of annoying but overall the head unit is awesome it's probably the best right now for those who are looking for the best audio option in the game with the digital SPDIFs someone who really is into audio it, it still has those hard-hitting apps dolphin emulator anyone <laughs> music of course features and all that stuff 
And for 2019, I think this is a great value for those who are interested in getting something that has, hey, I want good audio, I want good multitasking, good apps, music, everything, you know, decent resolution and a good step in the like in the right direction. The Intel base drawing head units have been coming strong. The 8.1 is silky smooth, no glitches or nothing. RCA, clipping, pre-volts, internal amps and digital coaxial have been tested and reviewed by KNS Diesel with the scope instruments for audio. And you should check out his videos. Honestly, this is insanely good if you want to see better audio. This is like tell like Join has done something right with this. Gone are the days of all the crappy Android head units with the crappy audio. Now in 2019, they're swinging hard. And because other brands have to compete, it's a win-win for us. If you have any comments or questions, drop them down below. I have all the links and stuff down in the description. Until the next one, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Catch y'all in the next one. See ya. Peace.